Welcome back to the channel. In this tutorial, uh, we are going to uh, talk about normal distribution and estimating value at risk. Uh, so we have got a couple of uh, practice. Question one, suppose a random variable X follows a standard normal distribution. So we know that if a variable follows a standard normal distribution, the mean and standard deviation are zero and one respectively. Calculate the probability that X is less than 1.96 using the standard normal distribution. So basically what we are asked to do is to calculate the probability uh, that X is less than 1.96. And remember, always we need to convert the X to its equivalent Z standard. Here, X follows normal distribution. And basically we are talking about the same thing. So we are talking about the probability of Z be less than 1.96. So remember, for calculating z, we have got this formula, x minus the average of normal distribution over the standard deviation of normal distribution. And here, the mu or mean of normal distribution is 0 because it is a standard. And if the standard deviation is 1, so as such, z is equal to the x. So it is uh, given this uh, the probability that ZB less than 1.96 is basically uh, equal to, to find this one, we need to go for normal distribution table. So we have got a graphic here, we can use it. Uh, we need to select the second option, which is up to Z and find out the Z, which is 1.96. So it should be somewhere here. So 97.5%. So the area under curve is the probability that Z or X in our case be less than 1.96, which is 95, 97.5%. Also, we can use table of normal distribution and uh, let's find out the 1.96. So 1.9 is here and 1.96 should be here, right? The cross point between 1.9 and, 1 and 0 0.06. So we are talking about 1.96, which is here. 97.5 is the final answer for the question one. The second question, uh, so also I want to show you how we can find it in Excel. So let's uh, go to the Excel as well. And in Excel, we can use the function norm dot S inverse. So basically we are talking about normal distribution, standard normal distribution and the inverse one, uh, sorry, normal distribution S distribution one. And we are looking for the value of Z, which is 1.96 is already calculated. And always, always in case of cumulative, you should select true because we are interested for the cumulative distribution, uh, which is the integral uh, of the area beneath the curve. And we have got 97.5%. If I change it to percentage, the answer is exactly the same, right? All right, question two. A finance company is analyzing the return investment in the particular stock. The return are normally distributed with a mean of 8%, standard deviation of 2%, calculated probability that investment in stock will have a return of less than 10%. So here we are interested to know what is. Uh, basically, the return of this stock follows a normal distribution with the mean of 8% and a standard deviation of 2%. And we are interested to know what is the probability that the return next year be less than 10%. Okay, so we need to find out the equivalent Z standard because we need to use Z table, right? So the Z here would be equal to R, which is 10% minus the average 8% over 2%, which is equal to one. In other words, we should find out the probability that Z be less than one. So again, we should back to this table. So you see probability that Z be less than one is here, 0 0.8413. You should find one, you don't have any decimal, is 0 0.84, 0 0.8413, or 84.13%. This is the probability that next year return be less than 10%. Also here in the Excel, I can show you how to find this one again. Uh, so we have got um, norm, again, norm S distribution, the Z is one, and we are interested in cumulative one always and the answer would be 84, 13%. So here we have got the value of Z, which is equal to one, so we use it. Also, uh, we can use, um, since we are interested in the return of 10%, and we know that the mean of our distribution is, uh, let me recall that it was 8%, and 
and the standard deviation of distribution is equal to 2%. So we can use another function, let's call it normal, norm dot distribution. So this function returns the normal distribution for the specified mean and standard deviation. So here we are looking for the value of 10%. We are going to give the mean, which is 8%, and the standard deviation, which is 2%, and the cumulative one, which is true. So we didn't convert the value of R, 10%, to its equivalent standard Z. And the function itself does it for us, but the answer would be the same. So you can use either norm dot S distribution, giving it its equivalent value of Z, but you have to find out Z yourself, or you can use this function in Excel. But if you want to calculate this one manually, you have to basically convert R to Z standard because the table of normal distribution gives you this value. So uh, for using the table yourself, you have to first calculate the Z. Question three, a risk management officer at a bank is interested in calculating the VAR, value at risk of an asset that he is considering adding to the bank's portfolio. If the asset has a daily return of 1%, a standard deviation of 1.4%, and the asset has a current value of 5.3 million, calculate the VAR of 5% on both percentage and dollar basis. So remember value at risk is the worst uh, loss that could happen within a period of time with a specific uh, confidence level. Uh, so here we are interested on VAR of 5% of our data or the return which is given is daily. So we are going to calculate daily VAR at a significant level of 5%. So remember VAR value at risk in alpha percent is equal to expected return plus Z of alpha times sigma or standard deviation. So here we are talking about the mean and here we are talking about standard deviation. All right. So what is the Z of alpha here? Here we are talking about Z of 5%. So we have to find out the Z standard, which gives us the probability of 5%. Looking at the table, we should find out uh, the value of 5% basically, all right? Uh, and remember, Z of 5%, because normal distribution is symmetric, right? Either we say that 5% or 95%. Basically, the Z of 5% is equal to minus Z of 95%. So Z of 5% is equal to minus Z of 95% because these two are symmetric. Remember, normal distribution is symmetric. These two are equal, but in opposite direction. So the table of normal distribution um, gives us value of, for example, 95%. We can find out 95% here, which is an area around, uh, let's say, this area. So this number between 95, 94, 95, and 95, 05. So this is the probability, right? And if you find out the equivalent Z this time, 1.6 is here and 1.04 here, sorry, 1.6 is here and no 0.04 is here. So we can say the Z of 1.64, 1.64 gives us the value of a 95%. Okay, it gives us the probability of 95%. <clears throat> the reason we find out the Z, uh, sorry, Z of 95% is that this table gives us the value of Zs or is, is designed for the value of Z bigger than zero. So it gives you the probability from zero onward, not minus, for example, two. So if you want to find out the value of 5% or a Z of 5%, you need to first find out the Z of 95% and reverse it, all right? So saying that, we can say here, um, Z of 5% is equal to Z of 90 minus zero, Z of 95%, which is equal to minus 1.64 or 65, something like this, all right? And now we can find out value at risk in 5% level which is equal to expected return, which is 1%, minus 1.64 times sigma, which is 1.4%. And the answer should be minus 1.31%, almost. So this is the value at risk. One day value at risk in the level of 5% is equal to minus 1.31%. In other words, with a probability of 5%, the loss within one day won't be more than 1.31%. And if you want to find out the VAR in the level of 5% dollar value, simply 1.31% negative times the value of our asset, which is 5.3 million. So we have got 690, 
um, 69 million for eight. So, yeah, 69,048 dollar is the answer for this question. And we can practice it in Excel as well. So, expected return was one percent plus Z. So here I'm looking for norm, a standard inverse. So the function is norm dot s dot inverse. We have got a probability which is five percent times, <clears throat> sorry, um, a standard deviation which is one point four percent. So it gives me one point thirty percent negative. So this is the value at risk um, in the level of five percent, and its dollar value is basically this one times our asset value. So this is the amount of loss. Uh, we can change it to dollar value or pound value. And another practice for a 100 million portfolio expected, one week portfolio return and standard deviation are 0.00188 and 0.0125 respectively. Calculate the one week value at risk at 5% significance. So again, value at risk this time for one week at the level of 5% is equal to expected return, which is 0 0.00188 plus Z alpha percent 5% 5 times Z of 5% times standard deviation, which is 0 0.0125. So this gives us the percentage of our times 100 million, we would have its dollar equivalent. And as such, I'm going to calculate this time on Excel, straightforward. So we have got zero point zero zero one eight eight plus norm standard dot inverse in the level of five percent times zero point zero one two five times hundred million. So the correct answer is this one, which is one million eight hundred sixty eight thousand sixty seven dollar a pound. And uh, you might receive different answer if you don't use Excel uh, because Excel finds out the calculate basically calculates the accurate answer. So take this one into account. But the answer is roughly one million eight hundred seventy, you can say. Uh, so this is how we can find out uh, value at risk in Excel or using the table. Uh, so basically, using each of them, you need to end up with roughly speaking the same answer. So here, Z is 1.64 minus again. And if put everything uh, next to plug everything into the formula, you should have something like this, uh, 1,870,000. Or the accurate answer, as I said, is 1,868,000. All right. I hope uh, this tutorial has been useful for you.